Hi there, my name is Sarah Lynn, personal branding and marketing consultant, certified Enneagram coach, and host of the Enneagram MBA podcast, where we mix the wisdom of the Enneagram with specific business tools, strategies for aspiring and growing entrepreneurs. In this video, what I wanted to do was share a really simple but helpful framework for actually how to use the Enneagram. Um, there's, it's very trendy right now. There's a lot of memes and graphics on social media. Um, I know we talk about it at parties and you know, it's fun to say, oh, I'm a type three and oh, I'm a type one. But what do you actually do with that information? I'm gonna give you the four parts of this really simple framework that I actually got from the Emotional Intelligence book. I thought, out of any resource, any type of way to explain how the Enneagram helps, this is not an Enneagram book at all, but the four parts that it goes through are very relevant and exactly what the Enneagram can do for you. So I'm gonna share those with you. Now, step one is self-awareness. And you know, a lot of times we get stuck in self-awareness, <laughs> um, we what just uh, yes, we're aware that we do certain things, but then never take the time to actually change. But without knowing, having that understanding about ourselves, it's hard to we'll never get to the change part. So this is a vital, important step. We just can't stay here forever. So you know, I talk a lot about we learn we have been learning about other people since elementary school presidents and artists and um, activists and now we follow celebrities and athletes but how much time do we dedicate to learning about ourselves it's not a lot it's not a lot if at all so the enneagram has been an incredible tool for myself and then as i work with clients and share with my community bringing self-awareness um, self-knowledge to, to our lives so that we can start to get to know ourselves a little bit better and step out of just mainstream, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to want? And it might, because we've, a lot of us have been living that way, it can feel very, um, draining it can feel very hopeless sometimes like something's wrong with me why can't i do this right everyone else is doing it this way why don't i want this i should be happy so we get stuck in that life of shoulds but when we start to really understand ourselves how we work our quirky tendencies what we really want it might be completely different than what we're expected to want we can start to embrace that accept it um, and it starts with knowing ourselves enough to know that we even want those things. And that doesn't just happen where you, you read a book and all of a sudden you know what you want or all of a sudden you know all about yourself. This is a lifelong process that will never have an end date. You will constantly be learning about yourself, but it can't just, we can't just stay here. So the next step, once we start to be aware of our triggers and even our strengths, what are we good at? Let's accept those. Let's, let's step into those. Um, but also what are we, where are we getting stuck over and over and over again? Um, we can be aware of that. And then the next step is the self-management piece of the framework. And that's where you actually make that intentional change. So you recognize your triggers and you recognize where you wanna go. And then the second part is putting that into action. Um, I There's a quote out there by Jim Quick that says, knowledge isn't power, it's what you do with that knowledge that is power. And I find that that's one of my favorite quotes of all times because it is so true. We, you know, we have our phones at our fingertips constantly. It is no, um, it is in no time we can have all the knowledge in the world. We have, we read all the books, the blogs, the podcasts, the YouTube channels. Um, and so there's no uh, problem getting access to the knowledge. It is important to have that and really self-knowledge. Um, we can't, like I said, it, it that's not what's powerful. It's what you do with that knowledge. And so understanding 
where you wanna go and some things that you've been doing to maybe prevent you from that is a great first step in starting to man self-manage, self-direct, make intentional changes and the Enneagram has specific paths for growth for each type, which I love, and that is what we talk about in um, our my one-on-ones, in those typing sessions, in one-on-one -on -one sessions where it's like, okay, yes, I'm this type, and now what? So that's that self-management piece. The third piece to um, the benefits of the Enneagram is that it also makes you others aware. I think in, a, in this book they called it um, social awareness. And so not only by learning about the Enneagram and identifying your type are you becoming aware, but it's also, I, I'm always recommending learning about all the types. It, it is in the beginning, you just want to deep dive and binge all there is about your type once you discover it, which you should, yeah, go for that. Um, but then also don't ignore the other eight numbers because one, we have all nine numbers inside of us, all nine types, and so there might be a time when you're gonna need a channel you know, some type three energy or some type four energy or whatever. Um, and so it's important to know the strengths of each of those and be aware of maybe when you're dipping into an unhealthy um, version of a nine or a seven. Um, so that's the benefit also of self, you know, some self-awareness benefits right there. And then also it's so helpful to be able to start to identify and understand others in a way that you probably have never noticed before. When I first started, I was blown away that not everybody wants to, like their top priority is not being fulfilled and satisfied in life. As a type seven, that that was that is my <laughs> driver in life, um, is to feel fulfilled, be satisfied. And the thought that somebody would have something else as a priority that would have a different outlook on life um, in such a drastic way was was interesting. The fact that I even had that, and then two that other people had maybe a complete <laughs> complete opposite um, or just another another motive. And so by understanding that, and you don't even have to know you know your partner's number, although that might help. You don't have to know everybody on your team's number. Yes, that will help. Um, and specifically for clients, you know, if you're not an Enneagram coach, you may not be going around typing your clients, but understanding what the different motives are can be really helpful as you create sales copy, marketing messaging, and even, uh, even on your sales calls, understanding that the way you speak may be turning somebody else off or um, you know, don't just harp on this one benefit, bring in some other pieces that, you know, various different types will care about. And so just having that others awareness of some people are past time oriented, some people are future time oriented, some people deal with conflict and, um, challenges with emotions, big emotions. Other people deal with it with data, not drama. And so just understanding that can be life-changing in your one-on-one -on -one relationships as well as creating really compelling marketing that touches on those core drivers. Fourth piece, piece of the emotional intelligence framework is this other's um, management, they call it relationship management, where you're aware you're managing yourself, you're aware of others, and now you can manage those relationships um, in, a, in a happier and healthier way because you have understanding and you're able to have empathy knowing that, you know what? Satisfaction and content and having freedom and choices for me is really important, but for somebody else, having feeling capable and competent and being self-sufficient and having the knowledge and the know-how is going to be the thing that is most important to them. And so they may start to feel um, 
fearful, which may come out in anger. Um, it may come out in, in a different way, but they, you may be having conflict because you're coming at a situation one way and somebody's coming at it with another set of priorities and values and motives. And so there's so much within the Enneagram that it tells us about ourselves and lets us know about other people, which is not an opportunity to put somebody in a box or give them a label and um, say, oh, you are a type five, you can never change, this is who you are. No, eventually the idea is to bring in all the nine numbers and, and embody them. You're, you're always gonna have that core driver, but embody the others and bring the healthiest versions of them in. So. You know, it's not an opportunity to say, well, this is just who I am. You have to deal with it. You have to accept it. We can grow through our numbers, grow into the other, the other types. To recap, the benefits of the Enneagram um, are one, that it gives us self-awareness. Two, it gives us specific paths and ways to create intentional change through self-management. And three, it helps us become others aware, socially aware. And four, it helps us better manage those relationships once we understand how somebody else is viewing the world and we can come at it with empathy. If you are familiar with your dominant Enneagram type, what that is, I would love to get to know you, love to hear what resonates with you most about your dominant type. And then if you're not sure what your type is yet, I would love to hear what questions you have about how to uncover your type. And if you are looking for additional help, a deeper dive into uncovering your type, maybe a little bit quicker, avoiding mistyping, that is what I do in these Know Your Number sessions where we will either start to uncover your dominant type or we will clarify, confirm the type that you think you are and then talk about specific ways to use it in the work that you do, pursuing your passion and just really your overall life, whatever area you really need to use it in, that's where we will focus on how to put it into practice, taking that knowledge, that information, and turning it into a transformation. So thanks for being here. I'm excited to start this YouTube journey with you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.